Some say that the ends justify the means. I sometimes wonder what the blue-haired, progressive, pride-flag-waving, non-binary they-thems think when they stumble across a video of an illegal cobalt mine which has collapsed on a group of the poorest people of colour on Earth, marginalising them from much-needed oxygen. These poor souls who spend every waking hour inhaling toxic fumes to get to the precious rare earth metals which fuel the West's obsession with batteries. Batteries for phone to tweet about social justice and climate justice. Oh, the irony. Batteries for brand new slinky laptops to write university homilies about systemic and structural racism upon. Batteries for cars and bikes so that we can glide chubbily through life feeling thoroughly eco-righteous about ourselves. I wonder if the blue heads pause sometimes to reflect when watching a father desperately raking at the ground with his bloodied bare hands, searching for a lost son under the rubble. Does a butterfly or two of cognitive dissonance start to flutter in their stomach at the absurd hypocrisy of the pointlessly virtuous net zero for me, not the madness? Are any converted to common sense watching these videos and the suffering we are all imposing on these poor souls so that we can smile smugly whilst getting out of our battery on wheels or showing off the new iPhone 27 Pro Plus, which we upgraded because we had the iPhone 26 Plus for at least three months and the camera on the 27 is so much better. I doubt it. Ideology doesn't like logic or reason, you see. Ideology is blind adherence. It's comfort in knowing that whatever the ends, the means justified them. Hence more illegal mineral mines, more buried people of colour, more whining about the imminent climate catastrophe whilst robbing the earth of her treasure, more not having babies, because God, who would want to bring a young life into this terrible world of broadband and deliveroo? Tweet, tweet, tweet. Dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Social justice completed for the day, turn on 67-inch TV, tune into Netflix and watch a gripping drama about a wheelchair-bound non-binary they pull navigating their way through the emotional ups and downs of a third trimester abortion. Rinse and repeat. The world has gone truly mad. Is so many people's first thought as they cautiously open an eye each morning and take in the coming day, reflecting on what they must remember not to say for fear of offending the wrong person. So many things that were no-brainers for primary-level educated youngsters not so long ago are now the serious domain of today's philosopher class. What is a woman? Pretty straightforward stuff, one would think. No. Many, many books and many, many careers are now devoted to answering this most simple of questions. Genuinely smart people drawing lazy false equivalences between the gay and lesbian civil rights movement of the 60s, 70s and 80s and today's trans cult. Homosexuality being compared to a satanic movement which delights at the chopping off of healthy breasts from young girls or hatchet job inversions of healthy boys' penises, procedures which look like they were done by some half-wit Neolithic surgeon who managed to get his hand on a sharp piece of flint this morning. Is it any wonder, then, that people just shut their mouths, stare at the floor and try to avoid saying anything wrong just to get through the day so they can pay their ever-inflating rent, food bills, travel costs or mortgage? But you see, the thing is... We are where we are in what is very obviously an end of days clown world because people have opted out of the debate and ceded so much of the ground to the means justify the ends crew. Hell bent on nosing their way into your life and insisting in a deep and gravelly voice that you call them Fiona. And just like that, a light bulb goes off. This can all stop tomorrow if the sensible people refuse to play ball anymore. The whole edifice is built on a lie anyway, a lie and our silence. Wouldn't the planet be better off if we agreed that we all wanted to preserve and improve it? We just have different ideas about how that can be done. Wouldn't it be better if we all agreed that children confused and anxious about growing up and in and a future need love and attention ahead of affirmation and mutilation? Wouldn't it be better if we all agreed that skin colour is incidental to the person and it is what lies beneath the soul, the character of a person which really fascinates us? If our friends, in the end, justify the means club, don't want to have that conversation and instead continue to start shout racist, transphobic, misogynistic, climate-denying, anti-vaxxer meaninglessly at anyone within range, then it would seem that the most logical thing to do would be to either laugh at them or ignore them and get on with our day. Now, no one knows what is going to happen tomorrow and it would be foolish to trust someone who says that they do.